Hi everybody, welcome to this week's video. It's another gorgeous sunny Sunday, so I'm happy. Spring really does seem to be coming. Um, been working on the bureau, the office this week. A lot of you commented that I should just sort of paint the, you know, to not get confused by all the colors, just paint it. So this is what it's looking like now with that uh, wine dark color. So I think, I think what I've decided is to do wine dark basically on all of it, except for the ribbon here, I'll do the light blue and I'll do the corn fart, the corn fart white on the trim. And then I'll just use, you know, I'll use uh, different finishes. So the wood will have probably um, a satin and the walls will be eggshell or matte. So that is exciting. Um, but still a lot of work to do. Um, so I've primed all the, well, I've primed all the walls. I still have to finish priming the wood. And um, I primed the wall, we primed the walls first before doing the plastering because it's easier to see where you need to plaster with the primer on it. So that's, um, if you're wondering why I've primed the walls before plastering, that is the reason. Um, things are like leaping into life here. <laughs> I don't know what half of this stuff is. I need Diane back to help me. Is this a weed? <laughs> or is this something, a flower? It looks like broccoli. So, yeah, it's, uh, spring has sprung. This is the state of the garden at the moment. <laughs> and, um, kind of a mess. All exciting. Um, Tomas worked on a little more on the, the fountain. Uh, the cool news is that he cleaned out behind the cottage and discovered a uh, cement platform. So in the end, like everything here, it was all really well built. So the platform even has a slope that takes the water um, to one side of the cottage and then down the side of the cliff. So it's all been built to get rid of water. Um, but it just, uh, it's all clogged up right now. You know, it's been not, it's not been properly maintained. So I think if we can just get things cleared out and pools, pools repaired and everything, I think the system of evacuating water off this property is going to work beautifully. So I'm excited. Anyhow, uh, I have some friends visiting from Seattle, um, Kathy and Willard. So they're here for a few days. I've sent them off to the market. They have to do a, they have to do a market scavenger hunt, <laughs> looking for things for dinner. So they've offered to cook dinner. So it's kind of nice to have some company. And that's it. So enjoy the video, and I'll see you next week. Okay, this might just qualify as a rain event. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm hopeful that it causes my cliff to fall down so I don't have to pay to blast it down. <laughs> it looks like um, my safety uh, my safety tape, what do you call that, is uh, not being too effective, is it? It's already falling down. Ay, ay, ay. All right, well, maybe it's not quite the rain event I was hoping for, but surely it's helping a little bit. Yuck, what a day. And it's freezing. Nice, damp, freezing day for me. <laughs> One more day until my, my granules come. <laughs>
Okay, this is how the uh, the granules get put into the machine. Oh, we, oh, wee, wee, wee. All right, he has to uh, change the tube to the other exit here, or entry, to fill up kind of the other half of the of the tent. I don't know what to call this, of the bin. Bin? Why do I have such a hard time with language anymore? <laughs> but I've learned all about how the truck works. Which is very cool. It's all balanced and weighed. It's all by. There's sensors that measure the weight of the truck and the balance of the truck. It's kind of cool. So right now you can tell it has just about f almost five tons. So I told him to just fill it to the top <laughs> since they seem to use a lot. So um, yeah, it's about it's about 385 euros per ton. So just give you an idea. And each ton is supposed to last about a month, <laughs> which apparently it doesn't for me. So that's something to look into. All right, it seems to be full. Okay, perfect. So apparently it holds five and a half tons. <laughs> Good to know. Or not, I don't know. There we go. Perfect. 5.520 tons. For a walk in my little woods. My neighbor Vince was uh, showing me pictures. He's got an invasion of, I think it's called brown moth. I don't know what it is in French. It attacks pine trees. Once again, my video cut out on me because of the lack of space on my phone. Anyway, now I'm walking back. As I was saying, Vince has an invasion of uh, this insect that attacks pine trees, brown moth or something. It's got spiky caterpillar. It's a spiky caterpillar. So he had me all paranoid. So now I'm walking around the property seeing if I have any pine trees. And weirdly, despite all of these trees, I've only found one pine tree. How weird is that? So there you go. Okay, here's the fountain. Oops, maybe too zoomed out. Um, but yeah, it's looking pretty good. So they've just basically done the first stage, which is to glue everything down so that it won't move. And then the next stage will be to put uh, cement, waterproof cement. Now I'm not sure what's happening there. Hmm. Um, I don't know how you waterproof a pool when there's a huge gap like that. Oh, I see, this, the, the gap thing is over there. That's the filler of the gap. I think it was meant somehow to be accessed. So anyhow, I'm not sure if that gets cemented in. I don't really know what happens here. And then um, I guess these are the two pieces that got cut from here. So somehow he's gonna glue them together and make a, a platform that we can still access the, uh, the rain barrel from. So yeah, it's gonna be really pretty. Can't wait, can't wait. It's taking its time, but it's happening slowly. Everything takes its own time around here. Okay, well, it's a gorgeous day as you can see. So we actually ate lunch outside. Chloe's very happy, lying in the sun. <laughs> Voila. Tamar has been busy today. Uh, with a couple of his friends. They're clearing out behind 
the um, the cottage. So all this stuff is down here. So that's a good thing. So he's going to uh, create sort of a, a proper sort of French drain in behind there so that hopefully the wall will uh, dry out the, the interior wall of the uh, cottage, which would be good. So yeah, that's what's happening. Okay, there's not many cases when I wish I had one of those little drone things that could fly up and film, but this is one of them. So you can see the clearing all behind there. Oops, finger. And so there's quite a large gap between the, the cliff face behind where they are and the wall, the top wall of the roof. So the cliff face sort of jets back. I don't know if they carved it out from behind there. So that's what's getting cleaned out, cleaned out right now. And uh, yeah, there we go. Making a big fat mess. Lots more stuff on this side too. All these branches and things. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Tomas has two of, two of his friends here today doing the lifting because Tomas has hurt his back. He has sort of an ongoing back issue. So it uh, it's not too good. It keeps him from keeps him from working a lot of the time. So he gets his friends in when it comes to heavy lifting. Anyhow, there we go. All right, turns out I've got an entire patio back there. It's apparently a cement floor. So they've dug down about 50 centimeters to the cement floor now, so kind of cool. And they've cut all the, all the shrubs along there. And uh, we were told by the geologist to try and get as much of the growth off the cliff as possible because uh, it, it bores its way, its roots into the rock face. And that's what, you know, causes the rocks, little rocks to fall, little big, <laughs> and eventually the bigger rocks to fall. And be left alone once more You got underneath the surface And you shattered every wall And I know I got that feeling There's no question anymore And now I stand here Calling at your door Oh, now I stand here Calling at your door Yeah, I'm yours Okay, we are in this cute little town of Forsy there's a Brocount, an antique store, dead across the way here, but we're gonna kind of wander around. I'm with um, a couple of friends from Seattle, Kathy, Hello. and Willard. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we are. Uh, we've been kind of striking out. We've gone to a couple of uh, Brocounts today, being Saturday, but they've been closed. So we had to get a little further afield here. I'm not sure what's going on. I think it's a Patonk, a Patonk tournament here, a Bulls tournament. Yes. Bulls, yeah. Did you see? She had a little, she had a little like a, a little leash. She lowered the leash and picked up the bull by magnet. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, that was kind of cool. Yeah. She's a serious, she's a serious uh, 
Blue's player, I think. All right, I'll start filming again when we're in the antique store. Okay, here we are. Bonjour. All right, I have found a little dresser and it has a marble that would match the fireplace marble a little bit. It's not going to hold many more things than my sundries, <laughs> but there you go. I kind of love this painting. Look at this. How much she is. Mmm. I love her. She's pretty great. Mmm, that's a pretty console, too. Look at that. Oh, eight cups. <laughs> Alright, so this one is 680. A little bit pricey. I love this bench. I wanted to get a bench for the hallway, but mm, it's 1,200 euros. It's a nice bench, but... It's gorgeous. It'd be perfect for what I want it for. I just don't want to spend 1,200 euros on a bench. Pretty library. Ooh. Mm. There's a much bigger, much bigger chest of drawers. Mm, not sure the price. This is kind of cool fabric, how they've written on it. Okay, I'm upstairs now. And I just discovered furniture over here. So I'm gonna go look. These are pretty chairs. A cool tapestry, but it's lost all its colors. Or it had no colors to begin with, I'm not sure. Looks like an Almor, but it's really just the doors. <laughs> Cute little desk here, which would be perfect, but 260. Kind of on the high side. See, I'm getting very picky now. Very picky indeed. I don't know what I'm going to say. You have to, I don't have did my glasses you, on. Did you find anything up here? Uh, not really. I mean, uh, no. There's Sometimes a cool, the, there's a cool little desk over here, but it's 260 euros, which is what oh, yeah. I'm going to spend for an old cool desk. But um, what's yeah. that over? What's that black thing? I think it's an old uh, case, maybe for a cello or something. Mm. Probably don't need that. Mm -hmm. Not so much. Oh, too bad. 
Sometimes the big stuff is upstairs. I know. I thought that was going to be a whole armoire, but it's just the doors. <laughs> is that one coming up or um, has that happened? It's just the info. Well, the info for my my listeners, and my viewers. Yes. Mm. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, I think that's it. All right, we're back in Lectura. We've driven all the way from Forces to Lectura, which is about a 35-minute drive. So, we'll see what we can see today. Looks like most people are open, so that's a good news. And uh, we'll see if we can find what I <laughs> see, what seems to be eluding me. Okay, this is one very... Doesn't this look like a thing for a funeral? I'm guessing it is. Wow, look at that. Hmm. Okay. Well, this would work now, wouldn't it? Drawers that pull out. It's got the marble that would match. I wonder if it's even for sale. They seem to be, they have it pressed into use, so. Hmm. Not seeing a price on it, though. Interesting. What does the front look like? Hmm. Give you a quick look around. There's some very odd things. <laughs> wow. Did you get this in Chippewa, Virginia? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a nice chest in there, but I don't know if it's for sale. They've got they've got it pre no this other side. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. But they have it pressed into use, so I'm not really sure that mm. whether well, it's for sale or not. Ooh, it's that same. It's that same. Uh, red marble. Top. The wet red marble. I like the I like the yeah. I like how the drawers pull out. Mm -hmm. So I can ask him if yeah. it's for sale. asked about these chairs the last time I was here, which was in September, October, and they were so expensive. And lo and behold, they're still here. Interesting. All right, I'm going to go ask the price of the dresser. All right, objective achieved. I have found this place. I love this place, and they're open, which is huge. So I've got a beautiful armoire here. What the price is that is. And uh, here's a lovely chest of drawers, although white, white marble. Not sure if that is what we're looking for. There's a pretty piece, but that's going to be expensive, I know. Let's see what the price is. Yep, 2,200 euros. Um. Place tends to be a bit overpriced as well. Hmm. I like the secretarial painted. Dressing table. Love the little dressing table. Mm -hmm. Isn't that cute? The chair is 2,500 euros, <laughs> but it says 18th century, so that's why. 
Tom. And I do love that armoire, but I'm scared to ask how much it is. Another potential dresser, although it has a blue dot. I wonder if that means it's sold. I feel like it might. There's another dresser over here. With the black seen a few of these ones. They're fairly common. Look at all these medicine bottles. Pretty cool. it was at the time, but mm. Mm. possibly this, but I have a feeling it's for sale. It's sold. This one? Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh god, I just noticed this snake thing. Jeepers. <laughs> Found this mirror. Found this mirror, which is kind of like weirdly the right color for my room now. <laughs> it's obviously been painted. It's not in great shape, but um, I guess you can't really tell here what I'm looking at. You're just seeing the reflection. <laughs> but anyhow, you get a sense. But maybe it's not too expensive because it's been painted. Maybe. 